Hi everyone and welcome to this panel discussion with the Dermatica expert. I'm Elena Sharafi and I'm the founder and administrator of the Tretinoin and Retinoids group on Facebook, which counts 67,000 members today. And I'm here with the, the expert from Dermatica to discuss a question about the Tretinoin and other compounding actives. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Nisa and I'm a senior compounder at Dermatica and I help to make and test our prescription treatments. Lovely. Hello, my name's Avnish. I'm the superintendent pharmacist of Dematica. I deal with the policies and procedures of the pharmacy, as well as ensuring our product is made to a reproducible high quality. Excellent. And I'm Neil. I'm the head of new product development at Dematica. So I'm responsible for everything to do with the physical product from formulation to packaging. Very good. And before we deep dive into the question from the group, let's frame a little bit our discussion around our main ingredient, which is tretinoin. What is it, tretinoin? So tretinoin is a topical retinoid and it's a prescription. Um, it's a derivative of vitamin A and it helps to speed up cell turnover and to promote healthier and younger looking skin. Very, very good. And what is it mainly used for? So if, if you have a Dermatica treatment for hyperpigmentation, for acne, or for anti-aging, it's very likely that your, your prescription contains tretinoin. Um, its main action is to speed up cell turnover, to boost collagen production, uh, it, so that will combat fine lines and wrinkles. Uh, it will help control comedones, uh, pustules, um, and effectively is great for general all-round skin health. And uh, given all these uh, powerhouse of effects, when can you expect to notice a visible improvement, whether the question is uh, aging or acne? It normally takes around two or three months before you start seeing the benefits of tretinoin. The initial effects would be on like fine lines and wrinkles. Uh, it can take up to six to nine months for collagen to be produced at a a reasonable level to actually plump up the skin. Um, you can get quicker results by using tretinoin at 0.1%, um, but equally the, the lower strength treatments will have a similar effect. Yes, and in terms of side effects, so now we talked about all the desirable ones, but harder side effects from tretinoin. Yes, so it's normal to experience side effects when using any new active ingredient on your skin. Um, with TRET you can experience um, tingling, burning, sometimes slight peeling and dry skin. If this is happening, um, you can stop using your TRET treatment, um, give it a break for a few days and then use it alternatively every other day. Or you can um, sandwich it between moisturisers so that it's buffering the strength onto your skin. Very good. Thank you very much for all your thorough answers. But let's now deep dive into the question that came up from the group members. And the most often asked question is whether Dermatica is planning on expanding outside North America, Europe, or within other European countries. As of today, it is only available in selected countries. Yeah, the, the reason that we're only in selected countries currently is due to the regulations around compounded medicines. Uh, each, each of the markets and each of the countries have their own specific regulations um, and because of that variation it means that certain markets currently we cannot actually offer the, our, our medicines and also cannot ship from the UK to other, other markets as well. Um, as a team we, we monitor those regulations or are in contact with them in terms of those regulations so as and when they will change we will be able to act accordingly and be able to offer products in other, other of those markets. Yeah, so that sounds promising. So let's wait and see if the market opens elsewhere. Uh, about your non-prescription products, so you're currently offering a cleanser, moisturizer, and as like as 20%, which are all lovely products. Uh, and the question is whether you are planning in expanding that range. We are, and we're actually we're working on it, and we have been working on it for the last nine months. Um, and we're looking to launch those products uh, early, very early next year. Um, we, we've taken on a lot of feedback from our customers in terms of, of, of the, the formats and in terms of the sizes of products that we're looking at, but all of the products that we are developing are 
designed to support our prescription skincare and build the regime there, but also for non dermatica users as well who are using a high level of active ingredients or, or acids, these products would be perfectly suited for them too. Uh, we've based them around well-known ingredients. I'm sure there will be ingredients that all of your, your, your group are, are aware of already. The reason we've chosen those ingredients is because there is so much clinical data to show that they do actually work. Um, I'm not going to tell you what those are just yet yes. because I want to kind of hold something back for the launch. Um, but I, I, but I, th I think, you know, we're, we're not a trend-led business. We're, we're not looking at the latest fad. It is all about the hard scientific data and the proof that these ingredients actually work. Um, so, so, yeah, they will be coming out early next year and we're already working on the next set of products that will come out, which will include an SPF product, but there are, there are other formats as well. That's so refreshing to hear. And then just to continue on that line, this new product, will they be available as an add-on to build like a bundle with your prescription um, tretinoin formula? Yeah, so we are currently working on the, on the kind of the behind the scenes mechanism to be allowed to, to allow us to add them to our subscription service already. But we, we will be able, you will be able to purchase them as a bundle item so you can purchase them alongside your prescription. The other important thing to note as well is actually, you know, again, based on consumer feedback, is that we've actually changed the sizes of the, the products as well. So I know we, we had some feedback saying that perhaps they weren't quite the right size, they were a little bit too small. So for example, our, our new moisturizers will be uh, 50 ml size and we, have, we are introducing two new formats of cleanser. One will be 150 ml and the other will be 200 ml. So that should give, give you, you know, at least three months worth of, of, of cleanser. That sounds fantastic and I will have the privilege to try them. So whoever is interested in my review, I will be sure to post them. Since uh, some of the people getting Dermatica in the US are actually getting the 50% as like has it along with retinoin, even in other concentration. One question was exactly that one. How is uh, this difference for European customers that are only getting as like has it with higher percentage retinoin? Which one very good explanation would be that you are already acclimated to higher percentage of a strong ingredient, so you are more likely to tolerate it. Yes. But how about the lower concentration? Um, so the, the lower concentrations of uh, azelaic acid are offered in both markets in the UK and the US. In the US we have um, some strengths of azelaic acid which are 15% uh, with a few strengths of tretinoin, so it can be combined with 0.05 and 0.1, but these formulations don't have niacinamide in them. Uh, and the reason they're offered without niacinamide in the US is because of a temperature stability issue that we have, which we don't have that issue in Europe, where we can offer uh, a combination product with niacinamide. Um, like I mentioned before, the only high strength azelaic acid treatment we have with tretinoin is 15% azelaic acid, 0.1% tretinoin. Um, but we do offer, uh, you know, the 20% OTC uh, in the UK. And how about the other actives uh, that you are not currently offering, like tranexamic acid, uh, kojic acid? The question is mainly whether you are planning on introducing them as an alternative or as a maintenance regimen for when hydroquinone is passed? So hydroquinone is the gold standard for hyperpigmentation and melasma. Um, it's, it's used quite frequently um, for a period of about six months. And after that period of six months, we normally have a three month break. I know that can be a little bit frustrating if you want to carry on with hydroquinone. And we are looking at alternatives with kojic acid um, and tranexamic acid to fill that three month period where hydroquinone should be stopped. Mm. Because my understanding is that particularly with tranexamic acid, there is a bit of evidence for the oral formulation, the one for the topical, there are some studies, but I perhaps not the best to judge how strong they are. Kojic acid is easily available over the counter, but what are your insights? Is it something that you're looking into or is something that you, you think at the moment is not enough promising to be added to your formula? Um, I think we, we obviously review the clinical evidence and scientific literature on an ongoing basis. With kojic acid and uh, 
tranexamic acid. The body of evidence is, is not there to substantiate a, a, a new product to be created. Uh, and we base this on our in-house research and development team, our clinical team, our panel of independent dermatologists and our clinical librarian. Um, and they will assess all the information before we will go to the development phase of a new product. That sounds great. How about your custom-made formula? Usually, whether it is tretinoin or tapelin has the main compound, uh, you will have an expiration date that is about six weeks from the dispatch date. And a recurring question is, um, how long would that formula be still good past that date? Yeah, this is something that our formulation team is working on quite extensively, is to try and let the customer use the treatment for as long as possible. We don't recommend you use the treatment past the date on the bottle, and that's because we haven't got a full picture of the stability of the product. Uh, what I mean by stability is I mean about the chemical stability. Is the drug degrading? And if it is, then you're not going to get the results that you want. Also, the physical stability. Is the texture, the smell, the colour the same on day zero as it is on day 60 or day 90 or even above? Mm. Also, the microbiology. Um, has to be considered, can that product prevent the growth of bacteria and yeasts in the formulation for the amount of time that um, we say it can? Um, and until we have that picture, we, we, won't, we won't extend that date. Oh. But that is some exciting news. So are you going to offer your client subscription with larger bottles that potentially last longer, like 40, 50 mils bottles, something for covering three months in the future? Yeah, so this is something that we're currently working on, so stay tuned, um, and our best formulators are on the job. Oh, that sounds very promising. A lot of clients will be very happy with that. And going on to uh, another treatment that is uh, very common in your formulator, adapalene, which is often used for acne. Is there a preference uh, to initiate treatment with adapalene? Is tretinoin an alternative in case adapalene fails? Or what would be your preferred compounding just for acne treatment? So uh, adapalene it generally is kind of the first line retinoid that we would, we would prescribe for, for acne. Both of them can be used, so tretinoin and adapalene can be used for the treatment of acne. Uh, the reason we go with adapalene initially is because it tends to have less side effects. Um, so you, you're, you're likely to experience less irritation with adapalene, but of course if adapalene isn't working for you, then, then absolutely speak to the Dermatica team to, to look to move towards a, a tretinoin treatment. But also, it, you know, if, if actually part of the desired effect is to look at um, anti-wrinkle kind of smoothing, yes. then tretinoin obviously is, would, would be a much better treatment for you because that, the evidence really there is, is very strong for, for tretinoin over adapalene. Absolutely. And people that treat acne with this uh, topical formula will often experience an exacerbation of breakouts, uh, redness, irritation. What would be your recommendation to take care of that? So our clinical pathways currently indicate that the topical retinoid will take a couple of weeks just to get started on your skin, so you may still break out. Um, if this is the case, if you're currently not on an antibiotic such as clindamycin, hydrochloride, then it might be a suggestion to ask your reviewer to be put on this because it will help to push the acne down. Um, if you're experiencing irritation or more peeling, then again, you might want to consider buffering your treatment or um, taking it every other day. It's also important that you start incorporating changing your routine so cleansing with a gentle cleanser and using a lightweight moisturizer just so it's nice and gentle on the skin excellent and on to percentage you currently offer tretinoin 0.1 percent as the highest uh, and the, the evidence is very strong for that as well as lower concentration both for acne and anti-aging but how about thinking of increasing, offering a percentage above 0.1? Is it something that you would consider? And if not, what would be the drawback of that? Um, it is something I guess we would consider based on the evidence if it came to light. At the moment, there isn't a strong body of evidence to, to suggest that a percentage above 0.1 will have any enhanced benefit. Um, we know with retinoids, especially tretinoin, that 
uh, the higher the concentration, the higher the incidence of side effects. So it's almost a trade-off when you're using tretinoin that you need to balance the actual efficacy, the effects that you're looking for against the incidence of side effects. Uh, we know that most people will start off on a, a lower strength of tretinoin, 0.025, and then work their way up to a 0.05. And then again, if their skin can handle it, they will um, increase that once again to 0.1. Um, so increasing the strength above that is really based on the evidence. And at the moment, we're not convinced that that evidence is um, strong enough for us to increase. No. And I think it's very refreshing because what I often also recommend to people is stick to what you can use consistently. So consistency weighs heavier than the just the number of the bottle. There's no point in trying struggling with unmanageable side effect just to use 0.1 uh, twice a week when 0.05 is perfectly tolerable. Yes, I agree. It? I think also with, um, with the lower strengths, um, or even the higher strengths with tretinoin in general, you have to have uh, a good, consistent regime with it. Otherwise, you don't get the benefits and your skin can actually go in reverse. Yeah. So You're you just actually getting use all the, the side benefits. Effects. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, yeah. So tagging along on uh, that trail about uh, um, uh, compounding uh, actives, uh, apart from tretinoin, hydroquinone is uh, another uh, one that is very popular for hyperpigmentation, melasma treatment, and the highest percentage you offer is 4%. Uh, is there any plan on offering a higher percentage? Is there any evidence on a higher percentage giving better results? Uh, again, it really boils down to the body and strength of the evidence at the moment. Um, and at the moment, we're not convinced that increasing above 4% is going to give um, the efficacy that the customer is looking for. In fact, it might just enhance side effects. So it's something that, again, we'll be keeping a close eye on, whether or not um, evidence comes to light. Um, but at the moment, 4% would be something that we'd offer routinely. Excellent. And that concludes our Q&A. Thank you so much for answering so patiently and thoroughly. And I hope that our audience enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.